Okay, let's start. All right, so I was thinking, make this video about uh, what it feels like to put across your emotions and the struggles that uh, someone comes to when they uh, slot themselves too much into a way of uh, presenting themselves and uh, whether we become trapped in a sort of robotic presentation. And the robotic presentation can be dramatic, comedic, uh, intellectual, uh, foolhardy, and yeah. So it's kind of like you kind of enter a genre of like performance, basically. Yeah. It's like performance or even performing laziness. Hmm. Is it lazy because it's like you kind of just fall into, not so much you fall into a groove as if like you're just like it's automated or it's smooth or whatnot, but I it's think like. It's more like, in my experience, like you're lying down on top of yourself. Mm. Okay. Like, um, I, I've been finding, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty true what people say about like, oh, you're the only thing like limiting yourself. But, but it's, it's in a way that I think it's like too positive sounding, not that positivity is bad, but in like a way where it's focused only on having like positive emotions, not experiencing the negative emotions, but then the, the, the blowback to the positivity with this kind of lack of nuance becomes like this, like, uh, you know, unnuanced negativity. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of like we kind of tend to like toggle between like we don't we're not very good at naturally proportioning in a rough way like keeping some sort of asymmetry that is I I guess I don't I guess healthy or suitable. We kind of like just go to the extreme of trying to create an extremity or we try to like create a complete balance like an a, an exactness to stuff like a complete symmetry when there's some asymmetry and proportioning that's required it has to be rough it's the difference between using fractals to like try to measure an island and actually just i guess walking the island and measuring it the way that people like, typically like, do yeah like um kind of it's this focus you get on on things positive or negative that like blows things up and out of proportion and is kind of overall like negative for you and it's like kind of an ex experiencing this uh kaleidoscopic view of things that feels very convincing for what it is and like you're confused but then the confusion becomes its sort of own like place to inhabit and you're like oh this is the world it's confusion but then it's like no that's your confusion yeah yeah it's that whole like there's a difference between you and the situation and like you're in the situation separately and you're in the situation together and mm. your model of the situation all of these things can differ and there could be sort of like a decoupling or a way in which one of them can mess up. Like what I mentioned in my video about how like different parts of your body can like malfunction. Something can go wrong with any part of you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, like uh, nervous system, digestive, circulatory. And the weird thing with like emotions is that I feel like it brings all that together and puts in like one sort of thing and that feels like very global but then the fallacy we would get with emotions when we tie them to thoughts is that you know of course you can persist in a thought and be like oh yeah that has to be it that has to be the problem but at the end of the day feeling bad is like as far as we know at least like a body thing and so you deal with it primarily in your body
Yeah. It I is guess. a body thing. But some people feel it in their like I feel emotions mostly in my head. Mm. Like the I feel excitement and stuff in my body. Like, you know, like the more visceral ones, the ones that animate you towards action. I feel like everyone has like I I just have this is my conjecture that people have different body maps for emotions as far as mm. what they experience most and what they recognize. Some people are more emotion to cognition easily. Some people are more emotion to action. Some people are more emotion to phenomenology and stuff like that. And they're like almost different emotional temperaments, so to speak, for how people experience themselves emotionally. That's my conjecture. I mean, I feel like 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 I get that, but then I'd always kind of like angle toward whatever works the best for me. I just kind of like try to like feel what I feel or whatever. Just kind of not cut it off, which is a weird thing with like personality systems, you know, MBTI, astrology, uh, uh, religion, different stuff to make you feel like a part of something. Fandoms, other stuff, what you like, what you dislike, that sort of affinity. Yeah. It's I feel it's... like there there's ways uh different ways of uh enjoying yourself or enjoying yourself with others, enjoying others' company. Uh, uh um, um like you know, I find there's different temperaments, different interests, right? And you're saying there's different sort of emotional inclinations, proclivities so that makes it feel like, oh, they feel a different way about things. So then that makes me like, oh, not just is it like a different temperament, so but it's a different emotion. So it's more interesting that, you know, brings me naturally to the thought of like uh, this not quite inequality, but like a kind of an inequality that can be equal like a mm -hmm. like a sort of alienation not in I, I guess you could say a targeted alienation when you divide things up like that but then it could also be in different ways of formulating this like different types of people a way yeah. that you like have different flavors Yes. Spicy, sweet, and they like work together in a certain way. Yes. Yes. So I think it's all you have these ideas of who people are, and however you think about them, you know, it might be accurate or inaccurate, you know, but there's not exactly a human science. There's not like, oh, these people they'd get along and these people they wouldn't get along in a sense we can sort of say you know i don't get along with this person because of that and we're like okay but that's not a guarantee that you would never get along with them right yeah uh so i think then this is um how you can really make sense of the unorthodox nature of most human thought because uh you know re your relationship to yourself is much like the relationship to another person and at a certain level is a question not of you know like finding out what to think but finding out like how to you know have these clashing thoughts you know give each other space mm. Yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. That's a very good way to put it. And I guess that's also where like the whole self love comes in and self care, mm. and being compassionate and patient with yourself to so you hear yourself out when you feel something. Because that's something I'm not very good at. That's mm. like you were asking me about what do I feel, and I can't tell the difference most of the time between what I think and what I feel because I'm so used to trying to perceive or formulate ideas of how I feel instead of actually being in it and especially mm. how I am right now is like I constantly feel I tend to feel the same emotion every single day most of the t most of the time mm. 
So it's like everything else is just kind of like trickles in or it'll escape me by accident. Like I find it interesting how we're both like speaking in this sort of like same cadence as if we're like slowly falling down a waterfall. Like it's sort of like somewhat, you know, like, uh, you know, like we're, you know, trepidatious, but also sort of like we're going to fall down a waterfall, but also like, hey, man, if I'm going to fall down a waterfall, I should like try to like, you know, get to the other side so I don't fall down the waterfall. Yeah, I mean, I'm mainly trying to match her mood, honestly, because if not, I'd be talking very loud. Also, I'm laying down, too, so it's like oh. I'm relaxed. And I found that this position that I put myself in makes it easier for me to focus and listen and also mm. to talk. So it's like they're, they're interesting how there are different postures you can take that foster mm. certain emotions and states of mind. Posture so. the people. Yeah, postures towards people, postures, like, I mean, physio lot, physically, too, like, physical postures, like, ways in which you position your body, how you structure yourself, mm. how you move yourself, and all that facilitates certain states of minds and emotions and stuff. Because mm. even the emotion of no emotion is itself an emotion, because mm. it's, like, based on, I think, acetylcholine, which uh, makes you alert and focused. Low and emotion gives you... is acetylcholine? No yeah. emotion? Yeah, like it's acetylcholine. I think that's a neurotransmitter or the chemical that gives you that sense of like you have no feelings sometimes. Sometimes you feel like you have no feelings. Not numbness. It's a difference between numbness. Numbness is something different. But like that sense of like you feel even keel. You feel like just alert. You just feel there. Mm. And, you know, something that... Yeah, I, was, and, I was thinking of that as an emotion and I think it, it's valid. But then at the other hand, on the other hand, there's a certain uh trepidation i have with that because i'm like is it no emotion or is it just kind of the fear of feeling emotions it's what feeling emotions the fear of feeling emotions i mean it need not be fear sometimes it might just be a uh a sort just of rest yeah a sort of rest or a sort yeah. of like stillness like you know these are things that are tend to i guess these are emotional tones that are more emphasized in the east like states that are entered into through meditation or through being in nature and whatnot. Like you can say in the West, this is what I'm saying based off of like the romantic era, we tend to go more for passion and sublime, you know, like more emotions that have sort of like a, an intensity to them or a spike mm. or a vastness mm, yeah. to them. That's an interesting. Yeah. yeah. Dharmic, Vitalik, the Abraham, uh, weird thinking about like your relationship to a religion or to a culture like i was talking i was in this group it was pretty fun uh something like a philadelphia free thinkers club or something like that on a meetup and uh, we were talking about generations another sort of aspect of identity you know what you consume what you do uh who you're friends with, what you eat, but generation is what your age is, you know, that's a pretty key thing. You're probably going to be hanging out with like people your own age. You, yeah, you're, you're like eight years older than me. So, I mean, you're not technically in the same generation, but you could be in the same generation if you like shifted it over. But you're a millennial, I'm a Gen Zer, right? And that's kind of born out and what our different senses of humor are. Yeah, um, that explains it. That explains a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's very interesting because I guess seeing the generational divide, it has me. This is a t random tangent. Then we can get back to, I guess, or we, we can scatter around. We don't need to like focus so much on emotions and whatnot. But there's a sense of like the different ways people can be divided or identified with, whether based on uh, phenotype, based on time based on location, based on activity, you know, like all these different ways of like uh, slicing and organizing human, uh, I guess, being, so to speak, and stuff. So it's just interesting when you said that, that's what it made me think of. Mm. Yeah. Because I would... 
What were you gonna say? Yeah, but I mean, it was about generation. But you can get back to after this what you were saying. I was talking. I, I mentioned you, and I mentioned how like, uh, so there's sort of this non-clickishness to the millennial generation. I feel like there's no like jocks or preppies really. At least that was the experience I had in school where it's just like all blended together. You don't really notice anything in particular, right? Yeah. As like this cleaved off group where there's this like intergroup sort of conflict. At least I didn't notice that, right? There's probably still this sort of, you know, general jealousy of like, I don't know, this guy gets X many girls. I didn't experience that, but... um. Uh, so I was talking about uh, how you have like six year old, uh, like a six year smart six year old twee, uh, yeah, command of the language, yeah. And there's this interesting, uh, more familiarity in the U.S. with like foreign cultures, but also, uh, you know, it's not like a binary. Like I feel like a lot of people think. being familiar with the culture is a binary when it, it that's like saying oh being a friendship with being in a friendship with a person is like a binary where it's like oh yeah this is the only nature our friendship could take where it's like yeah we couldn't evolve to like uh where we you know play laser tag uh together because that's totally against nature of the friendship because that's like you know that's against god or something but Uh, go on with what you were saying. Uh, that's what I was saying, honestly. But what you're saying is interesting. Like, there's this, like, being, I guess there's a sense of you also inherit an emotional template for how to recognize emotions and what emotions are acceptable to express mm. and, and stuff like that. Like in my culture, I find that even the most calmest people, they will, if they're passionate enough, they will gesture very strongly when they're talking and mm -hmm. they will speak in a very like emphatic and like, like even like, even a preacher's like, like if you ever listen to black, uh, I guess black Baptist preachers, black Americans. Yeah. That's also, it's the same with Africans who Af some Africans also preach it, the same. It's way. honestly, to my knowledge, it's honestly not too dissimilar with like white Southern Baptists. Ah, okay. It's just, you know, like, Black Baptists probably have more fun. <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. uh, um, I don't know. That That's an aspect of it. It's important to uh, have, like, a community feeling. But then uh, there's also a sense where I feel like you know, divorced from the community feeling, but maybe uh, there's an extent to which that's like self-segregation where I kind of uh, have felt mm, overly self-conscious. Is it self-consciousness only? Is it only self-consciousness or is it, is there sort of like a, If you think of it in terms of states of matter, like, like your, your conscious, your frontal cortex part, the part of you that does the cognition, the thinking might be very solid while sociality requires you to be a bit more fluid. And so you're not as assimilated or integrated into the social because you don't know how to melt into them. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was suspecting. Cause I I've also kind of. Yeah. Raise it in like a de facto way, but go on. Hmm. Yeah. Cause I've also kind of had that. That's that's where I used to feel kind of like a fly on the wall when I used to interact with people. Unless I was entertaining them or like directly interacting with them and seeing something unfold. So it's like I've learned different things with like dialectics or 
the idea logo says John Verbeek, he posted a sense of like, while you're talking, there's something unfolding in the middle of the conversation between you and the other person that acts like a path that you both travel on. Mm. So that kind of, it kind of glues or weds you and the other person together and brings up different things that neither of you could generate on your, well, you probably could generate, but you know, like just new things pop up. There's like novelty and there's like a, a richness yeah, yeah. and satisfaction and all that jazz. Yeah. I feel like there's, uh, you were saying about uh, it being hard to like sympathize with yourself. And I was thinking sort of like, I do have the same problem, but I just kind of think about like people that care about me and I kind of like sort of go through that sort of like loopy loop sort of thing. And I'm like, okay, how about I do that, you know, sort of try and do that and like a thing like that. So it's like an interesting thing when you kind of consider it that way or like mm -hmm. it's nice feeling. I think that's what usually has tossed me for my suicidal curiosity or ideation sometimes mm. when I think about the people who care about me and how I could hurt them and stuff like that. Or well, not, just... not like that, I guess, but not like a preventative thing, but think of like how they care for you. Think of, and I guess like once you're at the suicide part, it's sort of already through like a, a couple of layers of shame and uh, anger and uh, regret, right? Mm. Mm. It's hard to talk about. Uh, it, there's a shark quote from uh, uh, the shark quote from Gundam. And he, he says basically like, uh, people are reluctant to admit to the mistakes of their youth. What's funny is I said something like, I think I said it yesterday that the mistakes of your youth will always revenge themselves upon you in some way. Huh? What do you say? I said something like the mistakes of your youth will find a way to revenge themselves on you in some way. Yeah. So yeah, we seem pretty uh, scared of uh, the blowback of our uh, mistakes, right? Yeah. But Especially then, if they're like st uh, stigma worthy or they can possibly lead to social ostr ostracization. Mm. Or... But then, mm. It's like, you know, you have to have some like amount of forgiveness for yourself because everybody does make mistakes. That's true. I was actually thinking, I was talking to my sister about how like, when I get to a point in whatever I'm doing in life, if I, like I'm going to maybe make a video and confess my sins or whatever, or confess, because I've already did that before. And I was just like, I'm the kind of person that I guess, there's almost a part of me that feels like if I do it to a community or if I do it to the world, there's a sense of no one can hold anything against me or blackmail me with anything. And there's like a sense personally, of like, from what from what I've heard about you, you've done some things that are like, uh, maybe a bit creepy or something like that, which I've done too. But it's kind of like, you know, whatever you've done, it's usually your own sort of like, uh, idiocy that's more at fault than like, yeah. ill will. <laughs> yeah, trust me, it was it was mainly idiocy because I realized that. During those periods, I was incredibly impaired, like in judgment. That was I was also young too, but it was just like for some mm. reason I'd have moments where my brain just would not work, or I'd have moments where it's just like I would not get cues, cues would not hit me that this is wrong, or that this is could be bad, or just is stupid, or whatever. It would just be, and sometimes I was also impulsive. I just jump in and do stuff that I recognize after the fact. It makes me think like, uh. In like fifty years, there's gonna be some like HBO series or like AMC series where it's this guy and he's like a pedophile and he's like a Breaking Bad character and people are like, you know, extreme fans of him and they're like, I like this character so much and it like, I don't know, 
it would be it would be I, just weird people being like you know he's he he has his flaws but he's making up for it as a character and it's like but he's not actually and it's like same with walter white well, that would be incredibly well written to pull that off like I, my friend banister read lolita by vladimir Nabokov. And he said, mm -hmm. and one of the things about it is like the guy, he's a creep, but his mm -hmm. use of language is, I don't know how to put it, I guess delicious. It's just, it's so good. Like it just, it sounds so great, good to read it out loud, like his use of language. So it's like you're seduced mm -hmm. by the aesthetic and it shows like the amorality of art and how even aestheticization, you can aestheticize something that's not socially healthy or suitable or even, I guess, uh, righteous, if you want to put it that way. And then you can end up participating in things that you shouldn't or pursuing things that are not right for you or are not suitable for you. Because a lot of things that are done wrong, because I, I, I was talking to Josh about this, how like I'm fascinated by mistakes. And I think that's one of the thing, uh, mistakes and like errors and all these different things should be studied more because I feel like people kind of like take it for granted or everyone just kind of like people are big on problem solving, but they're not good at, they're not big on like, error creating error creation like how errors form how inconvenience forms mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i was talking about how like uh dang i'm losing it oh well forget it you you can take it from there i mean what what i kind of heard was uh uh harry uh pedophilia is good actually <laughs> that's not what i was saying at all i was saying <laughs> <laughs> i was saying that the guy he's a creep but it's like the way he's presented, it's kind of like how you can sometimes identify with the villain. Or like you might be mm -hmm. like, oh, this villain is cool. It's like, I'll never do what you do. And if you, I knew you in real life, I'd probably hate you. But for some reason, because I have this aesthetic distance from you, and I'm able to see how you're characterized and put through different situations and what you do and whatnot, it's interesting. So it's like it's activating a different part of you in relation to I, them. I don't know. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't listen to like a James villain talk James Bond villain talk for like 10 minutes about how he like grooms underage girls personally and he's just <laughs> like James Bond tied up in the chair and he's like it's a different genre like actually so it's like that it wouldn't even work for that that would that'd be that'd be too jarring and that feel like that feel like he's yeah like, you're first, you're abominable first I sober stack them on Facebook to check if they're emotionally unstable then i try to get into their friend requests and their dms <laughs> james bond is like slowly cutting away the root the rope and he's about to get out his like laser gun and shoot a laser hole in his head yeah it's crazy it's interesting the things that we emotionally react to or the kind of emotions that certain things elicit like there's certain emotions that are a bit more like uh almost like reflexes like when you touch something hot and you pull your hand away where mm. like they just hit you like immediately and other emotions require uh, allowed deliberations other emotions come from habit other emotions come from like yeah i think i think that about, that about covers it and sometimes people treat all of these as if there are reflexes or have the force of the reflex, or have the rationality of the deliberation as a justification for them. So, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know. What's an emotion? I mean, some say it's like it's like it's because emotion is very much tied with sensation and consciousness but it feels like it's also tied in with the sense of drive like an emotion as joshua puts it is like like the gods of your uh being the gods of your physiology they're the agents that direct where you go towards like you have a drive towards hunger or towards power or whatever and it's like those are the emotions but then your feelings are sort of like the messengers they're the angels who fulfilled the messages of the God who sent them, uh, the, they send messages to you, to your mental states and to your body. They regulate the climate of your mind 
to like fulfill those drives to like serve those drives and stuff like that so I don't know. I feel like there's a weird need to like, you know, it's like a very masculine way of describing it. Yeah, it does sound like that. I think emotions like, are also tied in with it's imagination. Like I'm watching a Fast and Furious. Yeah. And like one of the cars is driving after the other car, and then Diesel is on top, and he's just in this like a uh, billowing shirt showing his like muscles right and he jumps onto the truck and he has like an AK-47 with him yeah 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 but yeah I guess yeah this this whole video idea began with you asking me we have five minutes by the way but you asked me yeah. how do I feel about my condition or whatnot and I was trying to explain how like I guess I feel the sense of disappointment in who I am, and I feel a sort of hopelessness towards be not becoming who, inability to become who I want to be, inability to do the things I want to do well. Like I have mm -hmm. enough. It's like I have enough freedom to see myself be limited. Mm -hmm. It's like you're free enough to see do yourself you, enslaved. Do Do you sometimes have like a nothing feeling? I guess sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just feels do, like nothing. Do you think? Do you think you're trapped in that? I do sometimes feel trapped in it. Sometimes I feel very... Yeah. Sometimes I, I actually like, do feel... Huh? I try to like... Because you can't really be trapped by that if you feel correctly about it, you know? If you think about how... Because I think if you think about your feelings, you can change your feelings. That's what I've noticed. Like, when I feel nothing, then I can sort of feel sad. Then I feel something. And then when I feel sad, I also feel happy because then I realize that, like, I have, like, a direction. I get that. Is this... I, everything feels laminated over. Like, I feel divorced from my interior mm -hmm. and from the exterior. Like, I tend to use a metaphor of, like, driving and you have the window, you have the glass, but you can only look at the glass. You can't look through it. And mm -hmm. you can't look at... And you can't look inside the car either. And that's how I feel like often. And it's a very, it's a really weird place to be. It's it's not mm -hmm. an enjoyable place to be. And it's like when I used to feel depressed and intense emotions and anger and all these different things, that was better than where I am. Like even when I felt suicidal. It feels like that. you feel like a disconnect from yourself and yeah. from other people. Yeah. Yeah. You should try to like connect to others, connect to yourself, try to, because I mean, I, I guess it's not so easy maybe, but. Yeah. Mm. I mean, right now I feel fairly connected. Like every now and then I'll, I'll things will lock in. Something will click yeah. or I'll link up or I'm just like, okay, I'm still alive or uh, I'm still human. I can still work somewhat. Some things can leak through. And that's kind of how I feel like right now. Mm. To tie it into like MBTI, it's a bit like there's this FE, but it's like instrumental, which kind of makes sense for you actually. Uh, then uh, the TI would be second, right? So it's kind of this FE third and this FI blindness. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that's exactly how it feels like. Because even when I used to feel emotions, the emotions usually told me what to do. It wasn't until like, I started writing poetry or when I fell in love or got depressed that I could actually sort of like sit in the emotion and feel the intensity of it. But prior to I that, it was like just like, yeah. Also, also trying to like, you know, I realized there's, um, there's a binary I was trying to hold on to of like love or not love. But then it's like, it's like when you're listening to a song, you're feeling the emotions of it. But then when you stop listening it, you no longer feel the emotions of it. So I, I was trying to think of it like, when does it like begin and end? But it doesn't really like work like that. It's more like it, it like arises in different extremes at different times 
So I feel like that's sort of a valuable part of emotions that I've been realizing is not like saying like, what are the right emotions to have, but saying like, how do I have this emotion the correct way right now? You know? Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Let's, an FI user would very much agree with that. Uh, a developed FI user, I think it's because your it's your role function, so you can always keep improving in it, and that's what's going on with you. So I feel like you're at a good age to like keep improving in it, and it aids your Mm -hmm. the aesthetic side of you and thank you projects and stuff. Just like I think I improved a lot in any as I got older, mm. and. Yeah. especially with puns and stuff like that and a lot of my ending was mainly through language too and then transcollectualizing from language into ideas and stuff like that but even then i wasn't thinking about possibilities like that it was just more like sometimes it was like logical possibilities where it's just like but anyway that's a tangent oh yeah we have one more minute so i guess we can end it soon yeah the the ending of this video is to say feel what you want to feel and cry when you want to cry and do it all like a baby because babies are cute <laughs> yeah what should we call the video should we just call uh, it like babies are cute babies are cute okay yeah it'll be good i'll for put the in parentheses emotions part of it. babies are cute parentheses emotions yeah That's all right good. i think people could agree with that Babies are all cute. right. Yeah, that's good. All right, let's leave it. See you, man. All right, bye. I'm waving. Bye. bye. All right.